that all revolves around the Essendon Footy Club. Shortly, the reaction, the fallout to the big Dean Robinson interview yesterday. And also, we'll update you with the latest news about the young St Kilda player, Ahmed Saad, who has produced a positive sample to a prohibitive substance. Yeah, it's going to be a big night for Damien Barrett. We'll have those stories. He'll also tell you about a lawsuit involving two of the biggest names in football. He'll be out here to tell us who they are and what it's about. A lot of lawsuits at the moment. Also, the Richmond Footy Club have got an excellent chance of making the finals. We've got a massive game against Hawthorne. Trent Cotchen joins us live in the studio. Trent Cotchen, Thanks, man. I'll tell you what. Whoa. He's an unbelievably good midfielder, as was Shane Crawford in his heyday. He's going to be out here, Crawford. We're telling the biggest in the business. And we've got Street Talk coming to you from Greens for a big show. Let's get started. Great time wherever you are watching the footy show. And the panel, a big part of it, of course. I mentioned midfield. This is a real midfield focus tonight. Before we get to Shane Crawford, a couple of beauties. This one from the Collingwood Football Club. A footy show favourite, Luke Balls, in the house. <laughs> Speaking of footy show favourites, this man from the St Kilda Football Club, the beautiful mover, Nick Del Santo. Superstar from Hawthorne, Brownlow medalist, Premiership player, bike riding hero, Shane Crawford. Hello, Wayne. Hey, Shane. Nice to see you. Nice to Lots to talk about. Topical panel, too, it has to be said. So, plenty to talk to them about. And, of course, we can't have a show without the man that's been here since day one. What about it? 300-game superstar from Geelong. Please yes. make him welcome. John, Sammy Newman. There he is. Fossil. Just yeah, burnt us. Pardon? We all wanted a high five and you give us nothing. I, I was speaking you at the back before you came on, Shane. Ball, he had his hand out. You Did gave you? Him nothing. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, that's it. A little flesh. That's it. That's it. Yeah, what a way. Hey, how are you going? Yeah, we're going to talk about the Eston Footy Club no, later. Are you going to go along with the same stuff or are you going to bring something new to Surely the Surely not again. Oh, well. Um, Did you I've watch got a last feeling. Night? No, I didn't. I, I've got a feeling you're going to trawl through the same stuff. You didn't stuff. watch oh, the course. interview last night. No, I like to have make my mind up about what I think's going on, and so far I haven't been wrong. <laughs> if right. I was James Heard tonight, I'd feel really up and about, well, how would a you bullion. Know you didn't watch. Pardon? No, you didn't watch. How would you know? Because I've been briefed. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been briefed by them out the back. I yes. said, did they ask is that, right? that man, whatever his name is, did they ask him this question? Mm -hmm. They said no. I said, they didn't ask him that. Well, they may. Did they may not have made their final cut. The weapon. They didn't ask the two questions or three questions I asked them, did they ask him? Yes. They didn't. Well, no. And they, they may to... have asked them, but it might not have made the final cut. That's what I'm saying. It went for five well, hours. Well, they would, be the, oh. the, they would be the absolute pertinent questions right. you'd ask him. We will discuss it with um, Damien Barrett when he comes And out. I'll be if... making a statement oh, about hello. it. <laughs> what? Of any difference to the previous ten? Or this is our query? Oh, I look forward to hearing from it, because I enjoy... Well, you make sure you do, Gary. <laughs> Don't cut me off when I start. I've got two points <laughs> Make two. about it. Okay, from oh, Cooper no. to be great. Great to have Luke Ball here. Yeah. 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 
Colin would say this half. Hey, you're also the main man from the Players Association yeah, point of view. Hey, uh, just, we're going to talk Bombers a little bit later. Did you watch last night? Yeah, I did. Yeah, what did I watched you make it. it? Yeah. Uh, interesting, interesting viewing. Mm. Yeah, it was a, uh, another spin on a... Um, what, what I guess has been a, a sordid tale for well, well, the nice majority of the season. Didn't watch it. Why was no, it well, interesting? Let's talk. Now, why was it interesting? Oh, it was just, a, I guess, a, a more open and an honest version of events than we've been used to getting, I guess. Ah. We've heard from one of the players for the first time, one of the major players in this whole saga. I think that's what the interesting thing is. Now, whether who was that? Well, Dean Robinson, the man who... Oh, the oh sorry, the I thought you meant one of the players. No, no, no one of the main yes, players. Yes, yes, yes. So we haven't heard that. Uh, Luke, what about the Collingwood Footy Club, mate? Uh, you had some issues there with the Greater Western Sydney Giants. They were fantastic last we week. We did, yeah, they were. They were very good. Um, they, they've, uh, they gave us a real scare there and, and certainly outplayed us for the three quarters, but probably a bit of experience and you know a bit of you know our sort of cream, I guess, rose to the top in the end there. But, um, yeah, we'd like to be playing better footy. There's no doubt about that. We've left ourselves a... A bit of work to do with um, five rounds to go, but um, we get a good test this week and the next three weeks we play three of the best teams in the competition. So uh, we'll either rise to the top or, or we'll be back where we, where we belong. You're a good self-analyst. Bawley, what's missing? Uh, I, think, uh, I think a bit of execution. We, we had a good look at our, um, our stats this week and defensively, which is something we pride ourselves on, we're, we're going OK, we're in the top... Four or five in the competition in a lot of areas, but certainly with ball in hand, we could do it a lot better. And, and accuracy as well. You know, you, you don't really win too many games, Jim, if you don't kick the ball between the big sticks, do you? Uh, oh, no. do you I Sam? can tell so you what's missing, that a bit Luke. You know what's missing is Park. communication. Down at Collingwood, they're not communicating at the moment. Have a look at this photo. They are all on their phones. No one is chatting. There's no talk out on the field. It's not good enough. I think they're texting each other. They're, they're <laughs> so, is that how no, you that's, Yeah, we have sort of... Ten, ten minutes sort of personal admin time at the oh. club after lunch where the guys can right. jump on their phone and, uh, and clear up any Twitter or Instagram <laughs> or uh, email sort of work and then uh, it's phones away and back to work. So hey, like you had you get on there. with your mum? Phones away. <laughs> I beg your pardon. What did he say? He said phones away. Phones away. How do you get on with, your, mum? Phones away. Yeah, you get on with your, your beautiful mum? Lovely relationship. Well, yes, this yes. came across our desk. She was asked, Jenny, your mother, yeah. who's, um, uh, who her ideal footballer would be, and this is what she responded with. She, she said, I'd have Chris Judd's ability, Chris Tarrant's body, the looks of the Swallow brothers, Andrew and David, and Jonathan Brown's leadership. Oh. Were you chopped liver? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, when's Mother's Day? There's a yeah. Mother's Day present. Yeah, that's... Uh... I'll have a chat with her about that. It's not and good, is it? and quickly, have you spoken to Joe Watson, your great mate from the Xavier school days? You've been in contact with him? Oh, we're in sort of you know reasonably regular contact, more by text message. I you know I don't want to pry too much. I know uh, he's probably on the phone all the time, and he's got his um, you know he's got his footy to worry about as well. So uh, I believe he's been named um, to yep. play on Sunday. So I'll uh, I'll look forward to seeing him out there. All right, Nick Del Santo's been good enough to join us, everybody, oh, which yeah. is uh, always a good thing. Now, Dal. Yes, Jim. I think we all suspected you'd have your hands full with the Cats, but I don't think anyone saw 100-plus points coming. What happened? Uh, things were going really well in the first quarter, and then they just overrun <laughs> us. <laughs> For three more quarters and pretty much had their way with us. It was, um, it was really disappointing. We felt we'd be making some really good progress probably since the halfway mark, even though we hadn't won a lot of the games. We felt we were making a little bit of uh, movement, but um, just just dreadful on the weekend and they're a fantastic side. They have been for a very long time and we got what we deserved. And Damien Barrett will be out uh, later to give us the full details about Ahmed Saar, but it's a troubling story. Never a, a good time ever to return a positive sample, but in the current environment, uh, a bad situation. Um, has he been around the footy club? Have you spoken to him? Uh, I sent him a text message last night. I found out yesterday morning um, via text message from our CEO and the paper had already been released, so we obviously didn't know about it as players, but... It's, um, it's obviously a tough time for him and um, we'll give him some support, but in regards to the process, I actually legally can't uh, talk about because it's confidential. What are you huffing about oh, now? What, well, what's what? he done? He, what, he's bought a drink from somewhere, has he? He's he's there's going to be no end to this, Gary. Samuel, this is extraordinary Samuel. nonsense. They're the rules. Oh, what, the rules by what organisation? Oh, players, no, play. you're not allowed to. I'd love to play with everything you. Ticked off oh, <laughs> fair you open slather with you? Mate, can we get a list of things if we go into a supermarket, what we can buy and what we I can't? I think that's... Have that list. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. That's where it's headed. Well, and well, it's pretty simple, isn't it? It's no, been there it's, since it's not day simple. One. No, it's it? not simple. Well, if you're in any doubt, don't take it. That's pretty simple. Mm. That's oh, what the doctor's there for. How would you know? Well, don't take it. 
Well, so you might not eat for a month. Jake Crawford's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 To ask Mick about uh, the coach Scotty Waters. There's a lot of talk about Scotty re-signing. Uh, you'd be very happy with that. Yes, I uh, actually don't know a great deal. I think he's got a contract for next year yeah. already, if I'm uh, if I'm not mistaken. Same so, as you. Yeah, exactly the same as me. But uh, you continue to ask me anyway, Gaz. So <laughs> maybe you could fire a few at him as well. But yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think he's got another year and maybe trying to get an extension. Yeah, right. And it's great to see you, Gary. We know that all week you've been in bed, sick no, with a bit of a cough. We've got a week. shot. Yeah, we've got a shot of you in bed. And then, um, <laughs> what was even better, later in the week you've come oh, no. good and it was great to see you on your solid oh, foods. Oh, Here you are, there you go. Oh, no. There's your beautiful Melissa. Nice one. And uh, looking great, very long. <laughs> 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 yeah, right, well, let me ask you oh, about um, you write for the Sunday Herald Sun. I'm assuming you write it, do you? Of course. You're not ghostwritten? <laughs> no, no. So they're your own words? I don't know what you're written. talking about. So you virtually assured the football public last Sunday that Buddy Franklin will re-sign with the Hawthorne Footy Club. Now, do you, Did is I? It, is that your opinion? You're uh, more confident than ever that Buddy will remain a Hawk for life. Yeah. Yeah, what, on what basis do you make that assumption? Oh, he told me. So, <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. No, he hasn't don't told laugh me. about this. This is the biggest yeah, no, story going around. Yeah, yeah no, I'm boy. very confident he's going to stay. <laughs> Why? Um, all year I was uncertain because oh, obviously money talks and uh, the temptation's certainly there. And, and not only that, you know, long term contract, it's probably going to be his last contract. It's just a feeling contract. you've got then, is it? I've got a feeling, a very based good feeling. Based on nothing other than a hunch. Oh, Based on a text message that he said. No. <laughs> um, no, I've just got a good feeling that he's in a really good space. Uh, all his family's in Melbourne. He's got wonderful friends. Hey, the that footy was a big club, article that you the wrote. The footy you club all his family's in Melbourne. If he gets two million dollars, he can move his family up to. Uh, well, 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 he could, but I think the footy club have pushed themselves as far as they possibly can, and there's no reason for him to move. And I'm expecting him to re-sign and stay a hawk for life. When? Oh, I don't know. Hopefully, before he signs with GWS. <laughs> Shane, Shane, nothing that's, just... that's happened right. in the last ten weeks has changed any of that. So you must know something. Yeah, you're not yeah, letting yeah. on. You're not being honest with the audience. So spare no, I, I, all your readers. I'm being honest, saying that I think Buddy will sign with Hawthorne. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's just I, I'm, I'm That's having just a guess at it, but yeah, uh, I'm pretty filled confident. Filled up about 12 paragraphs. If I had to put my life on it, I'd probably hot would. Air. What? what? <laughs> you filled up about 12 paragraphs with nothing more than <laughs> supposition and hot air. Ooh, no, no but I might be right. And you might be wrong. Hey, see if you can get this right. Time. North Melbourne take on Geelong Friday oh. night footy. Eddie had stayed in North Melbourne, had a really good win against Melbourne, although it was pretty ordinary last week. Andrew Swallow out for maybe a year, Jim, which is a massive loss. Uh, wonderful leader Delaney and Jacobs come in. The big Goldstein in the ruck, he's a beauty, uh, having a, a really good season. And we have a look at the Cats. They were on fire against St. Kilda last week. Uh, and, you know, Hawkins is finding a bit of uh, form. Bartell comes back into that side. West, Blixabs, or however you want to say it, Sam Hunt in the back uh, line, who does a wonderful job. So they're going along beautifully. But I've just got a feeling, Jim, this is it. Another this feeling. Season, yep, I've got another feeling mm. that mm. North Melbourne can cause a bit of an upset uh, tomorrow night uh, and keep their season alive for uh, 2013. But in saying that, Geelong are an incredible side. Right. So I think North to win. Back Dale, yeah, I, win. I think uh, North could cause an upset, but they won't. Um, <laughs> Geelong were fantastic last week, Jim, and uh, with some of the players coming back in, I think they'll get the job done. Um, no, you almost convinced me at the back that you... You might be able to get over the line, although I think Andrew Swallow, he's played over 100 games in a row. Yep. And Needed he might be one of those players who you don't know what you've got until it's gone. Mm, I think I agree uh, his with leadership will be sorely missed. Right. So I think the Cats in a really close one, though. Very hey, well, um, really well said. Before we get on to you, Forzel, hello to Andrew Swallow, who's watching at home. Got operated on the next day with an Achilles, uh, of course, snapped Achilles. Uh, he'll be back better and stronger. Good luck to him. And very quickly, I want to recognise Green Aid, who are our match day partner for the day oh, force. They've been tested with uh, got any illegal in them. <laughs> no, what they do is unbelievable work providing water and shelter, food, medicine, education for underprivileged families oh. right around the world. So great people. Check out greenaidrelief.org. Warren, what do you think? What are you thinking about this big game, Forzel? Uh, well, I, I <laughs> anything? Uh, yeah, no, I am. <laughs> All right. I, th I think it's a danger game for Geelong. Do you? They, yeah, that is because they uh, struggle against the uh, Kangaroos. No, they don't. They've Did they won eight the Kangaroos beat them down there? The past nine against the Kangaroos. Yeah, last time they won. <laughs> what? They they beat them last round. Yeah, last time. Eight last year, last year, and this year it was a two-point. Eight of the past nine oh, well. they won. Yeah. 
two points. So really Just a minute. Well, they really struggled. They, they, the Kangaroos won the last time, didn't they? Uh, no, no, they lost time. by two points. <laughs> last <laughs> year, they, the Kangaroos won. <laughs> and last night, prior to that, I think it's a danger game for Geelong because <laughs> they get into that uh, complacent, uh, oh, dippy-dappy yeah. football when oh. they think they're just travelling smartly. Uh, but I, they should win. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Certainty but... card or just a straight-out tip? Yeah, go on, have a crack. Oh, well, that, that'd be too obvious, Gary. Well, all right. I'd actually like you to play the certainty card on, on not us, the other mob. Just so Geelong. That, yeah, go on. Mate, I'm, I'm delighted to do <laughs> it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Good. Why? Because then if we win, you have to do something. And that'll be good. Yeah, again, that'll be what, extra special. That's what the certainty... If you that's win, it. of course I'll do something. I'd be delighted to do something. <laughs> that's it? Yeah. Well, well the last time you, had, you played it on our game, on I had to bloody do it. <laughs> I had to go up with Warwick Kappa and just ride right. a stupid... You're safe, Sam. The, the Cats will beat uh, yeah. the Kangas, I think, on Friday night. They'll yeah, do it pretty well. well. Hey, got a very big show. Trent Cochin to join us shortly. Lots more to come on the footy show. Tonight on the footy show, the Tigers are up and about and skipper Trent Cochin's going to swing by as they zero in on their first top eight finish in over a decade. Inspired by Brett Ratton meeting the Royal Baby, we reveal some of our panellists' own brushes with fame. Sam gets some giggling in Greensboro. Here's Andy, who is a star. He is a star of street talk. <laughs> Plus, we dissect the fallout from last night's weapon interview, including BT's weird question that was left on the cutting room floor. Are you a huge fan of the TV show Geordie Shaw? Good question. Yes or no? Yes. And we'll show you a preview of Luke Darcy's next TV special. What do you reckon, Linger? It was really hard to watch that. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. That's all tonight on The Footy Show. Thanks to Mr. Navarra, home timber and hardware, of course, oh, and sportsbet.com. Now, listen, we need to get stuck into the next game of footy. This is going to be a beauty. I want to get Dallas thoughts on oh. Brisbane take on St Kilda at the Gabba. Oh. Let's look at the Brisbane Lions first. Some players coming out of that side. You can see there. Harwood, Hanley and O'Brien come in. Rockcliffe has been a good player for a long time, as is Redden. Underrated down here and shouldn't be for very much longer. The Saints need a win. Wilts out injured. Mickey comes out of the side as well. The big man, Robinson and Donnell come in. Joey Montagna with the points there. Shane, uh, before I get to you, Brent Staker, congratulations. Playing game number 150. Been a very good player. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he has. Uh, so, Kittle, much better than last week against uh, the Saints, although Brisbane's form is pretty good. Uh, although they've beaten Melbourne, uh, they went pretty well against Port. So, I'm thinking four goal victory. Dell, sorry, mate. For us? Uh, no. <laughs> How's uh, Nick Rebold? We saw him last week against the Cats, came off the ground and yeah. couldn't come back on. Will he play? Floating bone spur? Yeah, I believe so. He trained today. We had training this morning and he uh, participated in all the drills. And, mm. I mean, it's, it's been well stated. And he mentioned in a program, I think, last week that his knees have been an issue for quite a while and he does a terrific job to manage it and be able to play each week. Um, this week will be no different. Is so it I would expect him to line up. Is it true that he injects his knee every week? <laughs> he doesn't. No, but uh, I actually don't know the honest process of how they go about it. But he does um, accumulate fluid. He gets it drained every week. Yeah. Oh, so is it true that Bobby he knows. injects his knee every week? <laughs> no, I bumped into the other day, and he's on his way to get his knee drained. He's a freak. Right. Is that well, what are you saying, Shane? Yeah. Well, is that performance enhancing? No, I'm just saying, like the courage for him to play every yeah, week, absolutely. having to go through that process, is unbelievable. You well, wouldn't have done it. Needles. <laughs> I've had more needles in me than a pincushion, mate. Yeah, but that's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Around your face. It's not a bad one, Force. Well, Cortisone and painkillers, they're oh. performance enhancing. No, they're not. But, but, but painkillers are performance no, enhancing. Not. They allow you to play exactly. better. Exactly, they're performance enabling. Mm. There's a difference. <laughs> They don't, they don't elevate your performance, they enable you to play. Well, your body says I shouldn't play on, but if you take a, a needle to numb the pain, uh, your mind says, well, I can play it on. It enables you to, it doesn't uh, enhance your ability. Gary, very good point. <laughs> All Gary. I'll say is this, if anyone is watching this show from Asada, <laughs> give us your bloody finding so we can <laughs> shut him the hell up. <laughs> right. well, I cannot cope with too much more of this. Who's doing this, Lucas? 
Oh, yeah, I think the Lions, I watched them last week and they probably were a bit stiff, even with the free kick count. They could have got over the line there against Port Adelaide and they're, they're pretty hard to beat. I'm not sure how you'll go with the humidity up there, Del. We love the weather up there, Luke. Okay, we'll be very close then, but the Lions <laughs> by Saturday night, under the couple Lions. Of oh, beautiful. Who, who will you get, Del? Oh. Uh, I've had Andrew Rains the last couple of years, yeah. but I reckon he'll go to Jack Stephen because he's having a terrific year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Boy, I'm yeah. running around free home myself all night. You hope he does. Yeah. Force, yeah. your oh, thoughts? Oh, you couldn't think St Kilda off a hundred pointer mm. to go up there, could you? <laughs> I wouldn't think so. I no. think the Brisbane Lions might win and win pretty well. Hey, um, being a hero, as you guys are, to <laughs> yes. a whole host of people out there. It's a humbling experience. Now, you've got a very, very loyal supporter, Dale, a young girl by the name of Jess. Now, there's a photo here she had taken with you. Now, she's emotional. She got so caught Jess. up in the fact that oh. she got to meet her hero yeah. that she broke down in tears. Yeah, I remember this. This was family day um, earlier this year. Her name's Tess, actually. And, Tess. Uh, yeah, lovely girl. She actually didn't get one word out. She, uh, she stood there and started shaking and crying and <laughs> got the photo and away she went. So she's she's not, she she's was not, a nice, another loyal St Kilda supporter. Not she's the first crying. day of the years, guys. I've no, been down the no, nightclubs no, no, a couple right. of times. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not that, uncommon for... Yeah, no, for it, but Delbert. it happens to all of us when you meet your hero. You can Absolutely. become a little bit overawed. And we, got, uh, we went around well, the panel and we it. said, right, when did you get most overawed? And this is Samuel. You've provided this photo for us. This is the great Joe Frazier. Yeah, that was Joe Frazier after he beat... Muhammad Ali, uh, and was the world champion. How did yeah. you feel? Did you, were you a bit humbled? Oh, I actually thought I was bigger and looked better <laughs> looking than that. <Joe. laughs> you were I, putting... I, I towered over him. I thought little, I could beat him. There was a little him. flex there. Look at him, he's yeah. oh, yeah. 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 nice. uh, Circa 74 or 5 or 3, I'm not sure. Oh, speaking of, of great fighters, of course, the man you just mentioned, uh, uh, with himself to my right, uh, there's the great Muhammad Ali with the perfect scarf on, by the way. Yeah, and look yeah, at Gary yeah. Lyon there oh, and yeah. another pair of knee bone. Yeah, I did meet Muhammad Ali, and that was I got humbled. I was a bit like that girl Tess. And I like the. I got a photo of me and Muhammad Ali. Oh, no, we're yet. not talking about talking you. About um, you. <laughs> listen, <laughs> there was also a nice message for us from uh, Ali, uh, from Ali to Gary, and just with the one R, which we loved. <laughs> yes, he did write that. That uh, was a very, very special. All right, I met my hero. <laughs> yes, uh, you, you, let's have a look at your hero. Jim. David Hassel. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Foss. 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 Yeah. Foss and I come out with world champions. You come out with the Hoff. The Hoff. Yeah. Jeepers. We've got Lukey Ball who met uh, good Charlotte. There's uh, oh, Luke and yeah, father boys. with the boys. That's a better than that, Lucas. I mean, they're oh, great. They're good no. sharp boys, but... No, yeah. they were great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well done, Gary. And Nicky Dell uh, <laughs> with a uh, world-famous international athlete here. Look at that, David Beckham. Where's yeah, that, Dell? Uh, that was in LA a few years ago on a trip overseas. That's that was start. a matter too soon. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, look, they are big names. Ali Frazier, not so much. Hoff. Hoff. Yeah. Uh, Beckham. <laughs> but Shane over here has trumped us all. Oh. And this is unbelievable, Shane. You've met the Queen. Oh, oh no. And when you rode the mine, he was floating around, wanted to meet me, took her out, <laughs> made a great night, made out a bit. Is that fair <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, where was that? Uh, that was at, uh, just up the road, near the 10, Government House. And why? Oh, uh, because uh, that was 99. Um, and why was, did you meet her? I won the Brownlow, so I got invited to right. uh, go and meet her. So I went and met her and said g'day and had lunch, took her out, had a great you time. You did not. Uh, <laughs> very nice to see you. Hey, big game coming up. Carlton taking on Fremantle. Yes. Saturday night in the outstanding. The Blues are mine. Nine wins and eight losses. They made no changes to the team that beat the Suns by 43 points last week. Now, Matty Cruz is playing some very nice footy, uh, as is Henderson, has gone forward and kicked goals. He's changed that whole Carlton team. So they're still in the mix for finals, don't worry. They need to beat Fremantle, though, who are fifth on the ladder. Twelve wins, four losses and a draw. Our man Hayden Valentine comes back into the side that uh, defeated Adelaide on the weekend. Nate Fife also in excellent form. Now, the uh, Carlton boys, Paul Eaton, need to keep winning. We don't know what's going to happen with Essendon, obviously. They're ninth on the ladder at the moment, so this what's becomes very important. Essendon? Yeah, they're having a good little... Having a good little patch though, I think, the Blues and no changes is always a good sign this time of year, it means they're starting to get pretty settled and I think their speed under the roof at Etihad Stadium might get them over the line. Ooh. Ooh. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to go for Freeman, I think they're travelling a little bit better this year, um, I think their ability to shut the game down will really um, slow the Carlton midfield in particular and those uh, outside quicks that Carlton have I think will be uh, brought back down to uh, the Freo's pace and they'll get the job done. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's where Dell will be playing next year with the free metal dockers. No? Wouldn't have thought. Another hunch. Shane okay, feeling. yeah. Oh, just yeah. a little feeling. It. Told me at the back. Do an article um, on it, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think the Blues are certainly hitting good form, but free men will just shut you down. Don't allow you to get that flow into your game, and I just don't think they'll allow the Blues to score enough goals. So the Dockers to continue on. Top four for the Dockers this year. Your yeah. thoughts, <laughs> Speed under the roof. I've mm. never heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? It means they're quick. quick. Well, under the roof. Oh, Nowhere quick, else. It's just quick under the roof. It's a very quick deck when the roof What shut. did you say? We don't know what's happening with Essendon. Well, they may lose all their points, Samuel. No. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, I'm not Sorry. saying they are, but that's one of the possibilities. Well, no one would take their place. They'll have a final series of seven. No, no one won't. would step in. No, they won't. That's if ridiculous. If they lose their points, yes. no club would have the audacity to... No, Brendan Goddard plays by himself. Brad Scott's already that. said that North would jump in in a heartbeat. Hey? Brad Scott already said that North would jump in there in a heartbeat. Well, that, that is just... Right, who who's going to win this game? Um, <laughs> well, now, honestly, this is this is uh, watershed roof. day, this. Right. Watersh under the roof. Um, I, I don't think Carlton can actually beat them. No, I'm with you. I think Fremantle... I Fremantle, hope they do. Fremantle lock it down. The Blues struggling to score. I think the Dockers might win. Did you think... Did you think there was a euphemism, speed under the roof? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's shaking speed him, speed, speed under the roof. Um, now, listen, we need to get to a break because Damien Barrett is next oh. and he is full oh. of all the biggest news in football. <laughs> Everything was known. Nothing was closed door. James Heard drove everything. Whatever James Heard wanted, James Heard got. They knew what was going on. This wasn't closed door, secret meetings, policies, the rest of it. They knew from the top of the club all the way through. Everything was whatever it takes. And I guess that was the slogan they went with this year. Whatever it takes, because that was James Heard's attitude. Did you challenge it? No. Who challenges James Heard at Essendon? <laughs> there was a, a conversation that I walked in on between James Heard and Steve Dank, talking about Hexer Allen. And I saw James get injected by Steve. He said that he did inject James Heard with Hexarellin on 30 odd occasions. He said, I've got no problem with tax minimisation, but I've got a problem with tax avoidance. Which says to me, push to, you're, I'm happy if you push to the edge. I was trying to pull it right back and get the basics right before I got let go because I felt it got out of control. It was found Steve was keeping the invoices to himself. He said the substances, he said it was an amino acid. I said, what? He said, no, it was just an amino. He wouldn't give me the answer. And I'm getting thrown out by Essendon to probably protect their favourite son. His actions, the way he has handled himself, I've got no respect for the guy anymore. If it was honourable, he'd stand down. Be honest. Stand up. And the persona that you've got, live that. Because he's not right now. Welcome back to the footy show. Dean Robinson last night on Channel 7 with Luke Darcy. Damien Barrett joins us, the best newsman, the man that broke this story. Welcome to you, Damo. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, uh, much anticipation surrounding the interview last night because, as I said earlier, it was the first time that one of the major players in this whole saga has spoken and spoken openly. Yep. What did you make of it? Look, by way of image, um, th there were concerns for James Hurd to come out of it and... and Dean Robinson made him out to be in full control of the substance program. And, and let's just park that particular part of it to the AFL side of it. When they determine, by way of governance requirements and needs under their charter, that's an issue for James Hurd. But when it comes to the ASADA side of the equations, there wasn't too much that was aired that is not going to be able to be defended by James himself. Of course, what they tried to do last night, and they, and they did it well, um, was, was condense an hour of TV from what was effectively 15 hours of interview by way of Dean 15? Robinson. 15 hours. It was over two days at least, and he's been called back a few times since. So 15 hours of interviews Dean Robinson Ooh. gave to Asada. So they, they couldn't possibly relay the full messaging of that. But that's where it gets to, uh, Gaz. And as we know, there's been rebuttals and denials already, and Paul Little, the new Essendon chairman, has already gone into bat for James Heard uh, today. He just said that no police have ever raided James's house in a reference to Dean Robinson referring to a previous matter with Shane Charter. James did not call or speak to Dean Robinson asking him to investigate any undetectable cream. James has not 
maintained a relationship with Shane Charter. This statement came out today by Paul Little. James has addressed the slanderous allegations about personal injections in his Asada interview. He categorically denies a personal program of weekly or bi-weekly injections. And it finishes here with just saying that James and the Essendon Footy Club have never held the view that Collingwood, West Coast or Hawthorne have been involved with illegal or prohibited supplements. The suggestion that James Heard has or had knowledge of the supply of such substances that Collingwood is both damaging and incorrect. And that's the messaging that's been coming very strongly out of Essendon and it's a messaging that will continue with whatever's left in this particular investigation. So do you think on the back of last night, when I think we all sat down to watch it, we thought that, that perhaps this is going to tell us a hell of a lot more and uh, maybe hang James Heard. Do you think he rests easier today, uh, when he wakes up this morning? I, I reckon he did. Uh, personally, I reckon he did. But that doesn't... We don't know what the other 15 hours of interview that Dean Robinson had had. It was a TV production and that's what they had to do. But the Asada has always been in control of it. Because I want to get... Your thoughts, actually. I mean, uh, I mean, you have addressed this, as we all have throughout the year, but what's your take out of last night and, and putting it into the big picture? Yeah, I'm a bit the same. I must admit, I, th I thought that there'd be more. Um, there were no references to the one thing that I still can't get a, an answer to and which I think is the, the biggest concern for Essen and, and the players, and that is Joe Watson's admission to taking ODU 9604. Let's have a, a look at what he said on Fox Footy. I signed uh, the consent form uh, and uh, my understanding uh, after it being given through Bruce Reid and, yep. and the club uh, that I was receiving AOD, yeah. Now, what we do know from John Fay, who is the head of WADA, and there's, there has been some argument about and some ambiguity about whether or not this is a banned substance. Let's just read out the statement he gave to us back in April. It does not have approval from a therapeutic regulator. It has been prohibited since January the 1st, 2011. Why the confusion about this drug by the Australian Crime Commission? It's not for me to comment on that, but the ACCC is not the custodian of the code. We are. Asada knows it is prohibited. For me, that remains... All that he said and he said, I don't think we're ever going to get a, um, uh, an answer to that. But for me, the biggest issue right now is that we've got a player who has admitted to taking yep. AOD 9604. We have the head of WADA saying unambiguously it is a banned substance. And no-one's been able to explain why then um, Job and anyone else that has taken it is going to be in some sort of trouble. The Asada investigation is, is 95, maybe 98 per cent done. Um, we, we said last week that it will be released on Monday of next week. It's possible it could even be released tomorrow. As far as we can tell, it has not been released today. Um, there was some talk today and we checked it from both sides that there was an expectation almost that it was going to be and, and the AFL was hopeful it was. It, it hasn't come as far as we know tonight. So it's going to come to a head relatively quickly from, from here, Gaz. Um, with that reference to Paul Little in that uh, statement before, it was a reference to um, conversations within Essendon that Dean Robinson alleged James Heard made about other footy clubs, and one of them was the Collingwood Footy Club. And Eddie Maguire has denied it, Gary Pertz denied any wrongdoing in 2011. But I think we speak to Luke now if we can about it, uh, Bully. Um, you were part of Collingwood in, in that particular year. I just want to get your take and the players' take on, on what's being said about your club. Oh, my first reaction last night when I heard that was to take offence, take exception, but Essendon have, uh, have released that statement that was shown before. Collingwood have released a statement today, and, <coughs> and you know, as far as the players are concerned, that's, that's all there is to it. Daniel? Yep. Before you get on, I want to ask you something quickly, Dave. If there were 15 hours yep. of vision shot and it was <coughs> cut down to uh, just oh, over an hour. No, no, 15 hours of a SADA interview from Dean Robinson. Oh, sorry. To, okay, to, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I mean, there, there was, I think. I thought a, you meant Channel 7 shot. No, 15 no, no. 15 hours of interview with, with, sorry, I probably <coughs> didn't, maybe not explain that well enough, but it was 15 hours of Dean Robinson being interviewed by Asada. OK, yeah. now the suspicion with Channel 7, quite understandably, is that their lawyers would have poured over it and there yep. would only be so much that they would able, be able to show without running the risk of litigation. Would Correct, yeah. There, there was no doubt there was stuff that, that, that wasn't run on, on the back of that legal advice, yes. Okay. Samuel, can yeah. you talk or not? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually going to be the only thing that stops him. This is a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh. sorry, this is live television. I'm, I'm ill. Hey, do you want to drink a water? Have no, a, I don't. Take a sip. Yeah, have some water. Just, could I just say about Joe Watson for a yes. start? Well, I hope if not Joe Watson oh, knows that he was given AOD 2468 or whatever yes. it's called, someone must have told him those numbers. Sammy. Are you telling me mm -hmm. that someone at the club, one of the principals, is going to tell Joe Watson he's taking a substance that is banned no. if that man knew it was I, banned? I'm not That's the first thing. I'm not getting into any of that because <coughs> I would have absolutely no idea 
how or why... Well, let's be logical about it. Hang on. All I'm saying, and God, I hope that Job and I hope none of the players find themselves in a situation, uh, trust me, (laughs) but on the surface we have a player who has admitted to it and we have a world anti-doping authority that is categorically saying it's a banned substance. That's all I'm saying. I don't know anything else other than that and that would be my concern. Damo, so... Shut up. I've got two points. (laughs) I've got two points. Yeah. After the gnashing of the teeth, you're crying, and the weeping, and the hyperbole, and the jingoism, and feeling sorry for ourselves, and all that stuff. The last night, which I just saw then, the one thing that's of substance that didn't come out, or it did come out, is that not one of the principals, and there's plenty of them, have ever suggested that Essendon Football Club or James Hurd wanted to do anything outside the rules. And if there is a suggestion of impropriety, they, that man, implicates himself by making these statements because he has gone outside the charter of what Essendon, his employer, asked him to do, if that's what he's suggesting. No, well, he's not suggesting that. No, no, but I'm saying if there is... Sorry about this. If there is a... Uh, if there is a the suspicion of impropriety, not one of the people, and there'd be plenty of detract, detractors of James Hurd, have ever suggested that he asked anyone to do anything illegal or outside the guidelines. No, 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 no and that's right. So... And that's what the Asada investigation... So, when Joe Watson says he took AOD yes, 2468... Yes, yes, um, uh, Are you telling me that one of the principals... No, I'm not telling you. I don't... But, but this, is, no the, this is the logical point. I, so Why yeah. would someone tell Joe Watson no, he's taking a prohibited I, substance? I, I'm saying to you, I don't know how it came about. All <laughs> I know is that I've seen Joe, who I hold in the highest regard... And James Hurd. No, no, I tell you no, what, no, I'm not would... talking about James Hurd. I'm not talking about everyone's one... talking about James Hurd. Well, James not... Hurd can, he can eat wagyu flavoured bison shit if he wants to. <laughs> he is not a player. That's true. That he, is... Why they're talking about true. what he got injected with? He is irrelevant. No, well, that's true. And that Dean Robinson has made a comment <laughs> that James has refuted. Bison yeah, shit. Yeah, how'd you like to be in the trenches with Dean <laughs> Robinson? Uh, anyway, now listen. Now you just, got one more. I've got one more. Oh, but no. the biggest scandal mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. is a complicit media, who at best, at best, are charlatans. Who's been complicit? <laughs> Uh, I, well, I, I will not mention their names well, for, for, for the very for what the very for the very sake of reason, Gary. That we're probably on our last uh, call here, yeah. <laughs> and if uh, we uh, have to front anyone else What's again, uh, a complicit media who at best are charlatans, at worst are absolute patent liars and untrustworthy. <laughs> no, oh. no, no, and, no, 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 mate. No, oh. no, no. They are self-absorbed. That, no, that is a broad statement that. Unless you are prepared to name no. names, you are categorising a whole media. I said, if I, I'm, I said, I'm not prepared to mention okay, names. Well, it's obviously, it's not fair to make your comment then, because uh, you well, are. If like, the you, cap fits, you're also wrong, Sam. So you, you've cap, made this point so many times. If the cap it fits go. where it, uh, they're <laughs> self-absorbed, sycophantic bottom feeders. <laughs> and honestly, in truth, they love the. <laughs> Okay, on and on and on. Well, they make it up as they go, no, hoping that desperately a, that something they say it's will... It's a grandstanding statement by you, yes. and it's far too broad a brush. This ju- it is. This, this yeah, has you're, gone you're on... You're implicating the man on your left. Who you are and story. all of us are oh, in the media. Mate, we're and all you. in the media. We're all in the media, yeah. Foss. Uh, we need to keep moving. We do. We go, uh, I Ahmed said Saad. those who are complicit. They know who they are. All right. We will move on. Ahmed Saad from the St Kilda Footy Club. Yeah, right? JB, he produced an irregularity in a match day drug test, and right now he's waiting the B sample of what has been irregular in the A sample. It's a very strange background to this particular case. He's got a personal connection with a protein company called Viking Protein. We just show you a photo here of his involvement with it. That's him promoting the product. And we move on there to a Facebook reference from the particular company itself. And the company itself is Viking Protein Australia. It refers there to a product called Before Battle. What else would you expect? That's when he started playing football last year for St Kilda. We raise that because off the shelf today we've managed to buy this oh, product gotcha. and on, on this list of ingredients is, a, is a, an ingredient Ooh. called methyl cyneferine, which is listed there. And Unfortunately for, for Ahmed, if it indeed is the, uh, the B sample that comes back, that is the substance there listed under the WADA code as a banned substance under oh. the S6 of stimulants. So oh. that's what he's awaiting for. 
Interestingly enough, it's the same substance by another name. It's got Asafa Powell into recent trouble. Okay, so, and there's precedent here. There's a young VFL uh, footballer, Matthew... Clark. Clark, who um, was suspended by Asada for... Oh, sorry, he was suspended for nine months because he also took a substance that was on the ban list. Yep. Asada then appealed that, and that nine months became two years. Yep, and that's what he's going to hope oh. to actually mitigate downwards. But okay. he's certainly, as we go to air tonight, expecting uh, the full wrath to, to come his way. Alright, and uh, we've already spoken to Shane about Buddy... Uh, sorry, no. no we've got... Before we get to Buddy, that's uh, two big name players who are going to, uh, it looks like, going to head to court. Yeah, we know that um, Matty Scarlett's got a book out. Hold the line. Um, we know that he made an allegation against Aaron Hamill that Aaron Hamill in, in 2002 at Canadian Park actually spat at him. He was described yeah, it as a dog. Like, this is the game in question. It actually happened to be Nick Del Santo's uh, debut match of footy. We'll speak to Nick very briefly about this in a minute, but Hamill, Hamill has denied this act that uh, Scarlett described as a dog act. But not only is he denying this act, he's actually now positioning himself to take legal action against Scarlett. He's got a statement of claims ready to go, and this will head to the courts over the allegation made against him we, in the we, book. Uh, was that the game? That was the game. Can we trawl through it to see if we there was did. any We have. Spittle, we did, we did, and we did, involved? and there's, there's no, uh, no picking up on the cameras. But are you aware of this uh, incident, uh, Nick, in your, in your first game of footy? No, not until it was published, uh, I think, last week in the paper. It was obviously my first game. So when you kicked that very exciting oh, goal, Mel? And you commentated very well, Jim. We actually lost that game by 122. So <laughs> it was one of three, I think. Things have been going well down there for us lately. But um, <laughs> yeah, I obviously had no idea. I, wasn't, I can't recall being spoken about after the game or any um, ill feeling um, leaving that game. But obviously it's been said and they'll yep. have to deal with it now. Yeah. Have you ever yeah, taken probably... some Viking? I've never heard of that, mate. I'm, okay. uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know. Understand any of that stuff, so I don't do any of that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, um, last one here, Buddy Frank. Yeah, I heard Shane talk before about uh, Hawthorne hunch. Uh, hunch. Um, oh, he's got good reason to have that hunch, guys. There's no doubt that Hawthorne in the past three weeks has got a real confidence about this situation really? that didn't have a month ago. There's still a lot to play out with it, but the feeling has 100% changed from Hawthorne people. And, <laughs> just and they, they are very, they now very confident that, right? that Buddy's got his mind back open to, to staying because well, that wasn't always the case back the way open they were thinking. Or very much leaning towards. Very staying. much leaning towards. That is a huge staying. turnaround from where this story's been yeah. for the past month. Or and so. it may change again, but right now, as we go to it tonight, media beat very up confident. again, Gary. Would it? Shane, Shane, beat yeah, up. Yeah, media well, beat up. The complicit bottom feeders. Hey, uh, <laughs> Damo, before we let you go, I, I know uh, James heard or. Uh, one of the things that came out of the recent uh, television show was that he stated that Hawthorne was the club that he disliked more than any other. Um, and that won't be any surprise to Essendon and Hawthorne fans because the rivalry is deep. But Shane, we think we may have uh, stumbled across exactly why uh, James disliked Hawthorne as much as he did. Oh. Have a look at this. There's old Wayne Crawford oh, over oh, the fence yeah. with the superstar. You animal. <laughs> Shove his head under the fence, Shane. Two Brownlow medalists. That's how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't take on the little man or I'll smash you. <laughs> All right, take it away, Shane. You've got a big game of footy. Thank Damien Barrett. Well as he, uh, we have. We've got a massive well game of footy. Uh, not sure which one's coming up. But there it is. The West Coast Eagles up against the Gold Coast Suns. Well done, Damien Barrett. Fantastic uh, brown mastiff with the Gold Coast Suns. Well done, Damien Barrett. Fantastic brown mastiff. Morton, they're all out. Embley comes in. Glass, the captain, will go down to full back and give him some great leadership. And the Gold Coast Suns, who are a massive chance in this game. Um, Thompson. Uh, very, very good player. Ablett, what a star. Swallow. Uh, Prestia, who is a very good run with, having a terrific season. They come in and uh, had a bit of a chat to Campbell Brown today, and he's very confident they can go up and cause a bit of an upset. Although I can't work out West Coast. I cannot work out when what's West going Coast on. West Coast can't make the final, Shane. They drop off horribly. So, what are you saying? They drop off horribly. <laughs> so, you're saying they don't try? <laughs> oh, we're just oh, excuse Sam. Sam. <laughs> it's just funny. He's getting himself <laughs> scared. Well, he's blowing your nose. Everyone can well, hear what's yeah, going on. Do you want to take a break for us? Oh, you want to spell out the back of the Well, I had a little bit of nasal resonance. It started to come out my nostrils, Gary. I've got a handkerchief. Did you just want it to dribble down there? Well, I won't blow it next. 
next Big time. Boy, I won't play next time. You also had some eyelid uh, resonance poking out too. Oh, You've got oh. juices coming from everywhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> next, Gary. <I'll... laughs> I'll just let my nose run next time. I, I, I think you should go out oh. the back. Just yeah. gather oh, if I go out the back, I'll go home. No, we'll stay there. <laughs> yes, go on. Uh, yeah, I think Gold Coast, massive chance uh, to whether or not West Coast uh, oh, turn up and want to win. So I'm going to just think oh. that West Coast in a real tight one. All right, Dale. No, I uh, totally agree with Shane. I think I'm really looking forward to this game. I reckon Gold Coast will be a really good oh. test for them to be able to travel. They've had a fantastic year, Sam. But I think over there, West Coast. Uh, Lukey Ball. Uh, the Gold Coast will actually like playing on Patterson Stadium. I think it's very yeah. similar dimension-wise to Metricon Stadium, but I think... Uh, <laughs> no roof. <laughs> no roof. I think the Eagles have had a, a, just a terrible year injury-wise, but I think they've got a few back glasses back and they'll just get over the line. In terms of etiquette, you were the captain of Xavier College. Where do you reckon the old fools oh, was going geez. tonight? I would have waited till a break. I thought, yeah. <laughs> Mate, you, did you want it to dribble into my no, mouth? No, yeah. <laughs> There's a box of tissues. So, so, so you've so probably you, done a great so job Nicky, to actually You're looking league. forward to this game, eh? We'll be stumped up on the divan watching it, will you? What, when are they playing? When's this game? Saturday. 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 Yeah, yeah, before I probably case. won't watch it, actually. I'll be you tape it and for rush home yeah, and watch it probably. with a pizza or something? Mate, this is some games yeah. that you look forward to. And I reckon the Gold Coast played some fantastic footy this year. They're exciting and they love the challenge. And I think they've stood up this year. They'll go to West Coast and they'll give it a real Crack, no, I, all... I agree with all that, mate, but you wouldn't be gay. I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> that was my I'll point. I look forward to it. Boss? I think the Gold Coast are, 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 are tired. Oh, I do? You? Oh. They've had a very big campaign. They've done extraordinarily well this year, mm. but I think they're tired. All right, then. So you're tipping West Coast. Last well, time I... they played, 126 win to West Coast. No, well, that's, that's for pretty irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for no. West Coast, but uh, I don't think it's going to matter that much. Hey, uh, listen, our f yes. Uh, Sam's the only one old enough to carry a handkerchief left no, in society. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me tell you about <laughs> Samuel. Sportsbet.com.au continue their great uh, AFL footy specials this year. Let me tell you, in August, every game, oh. if your first goal scores, <laughs> oh, doesn't kick a goal for the whole match, sportsbet.com.au are going to give you your money back up to 100 bucks. So you can oh. back any player to kick the first goal. If he goes goalless, oh. you won't be penniless. Conditions apply. Visit sportsbet.com.au for details. Speaking of sportsbet, Gaz, yes. in a footy show exclusive, I can reveal they've Ooh. declared this year's Brownlow over oh. and they've paid out 270 grand what? to 1500 customers in bets on Gary Ablett. Oh. So if you've got a sports bet account, you're back, Gaz, to win the Brownlow, absolutely. That's extraordinary. Check, check your account and the oh, cash God. is in. Uh, they, they normally uh, get these early payouts yeah. right. They did uh, pay out though on Chris Judd a couple of years ago and he didn't win, so it cost them 300 grand. But if you've bet on Gary Ablett uh, with Sports Bet, the money will be in your you account. Go that's, 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 that's extraordinary. That's what sportsbet.com.au do, yes. Samuel. They're the best in the business. Go and take a break. You bet responsibly. Bet gamble responsibly. The captain of Richmond, Trent Cotchin, next on the footy show. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you don't always want to be the one. Oh, girls just want to have fun. Yeah, girls just want to have fun. You only ever did it just for fun. You run to paradise. You don't know. You don't know you're beautiful now. And that's what makes you beautiful. Love Shaq. Baby love Shaq Love Shaq Baby love Shaq Stop right now Thank you very much I need somebody with a human touch <laughs> That's all I'm gonna sing, that's for you boys out there Get on up when you're down Baby take a good look around That's all? <laughs> what in Gangnam Style? You're insecure don't know what for. You're turning heads when you walk through the door. That's it. Thank you. Very good. And now, Gary, uh, there's someone else on this panel who can hold a very good tune. Lukey Ball, we've got some footage right here of Lukey Ball at his very best. <laughs> 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 How long ago was that, Luke? Oh. Where was that? 
That was uh, <laughs> growing up in Russia, I think I was <laughs> yeah. back then. Pretty yeah. involved tune too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very much, nice, to it, yeah. Uh, wasn't much to it. Very nice voice. I thought Dennis was a clear stand out uh, mm. from the Cup Footy Club. Hey, time now to welcome a man at uh, the Richmond Footy Club, or a massive football club, and when they're up and going, the AFL's up and going. They may very well played in their first final series, I think, since Danny Frawley was the helm, and the man mm. that's going to lead them there is their captain, Trent Cotchin, and he joins us tonight. <laughs> footballers in the game, not just the Richmond supporters too, I might add. Great to have you, Koch, and I must say uh, social media, Samuel, has yeah. gone crazy about uh, the big game coming up, Richmond versus Hawthorne. You've got a contagious sort of Ooh. a flu. Yeah. Ooh. Maybe just keep your distance. Yeah. All right. Exactly right. Yeah, I know, I will. I will. Yeah, I've Thanks, got some yeah. stuff that might help us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, exciting. 11 wins, 6 losses, you're on the verge. I know you can't get too far ahead of yourself. This game against Hawthorne's enormous, and it's a scalp you wouldn't mind taking. Yeah, it certainly is, and uh, we know that Dimmer's spent a lot of time there as well, so we, obviously everything changes every season and, and so forth, and teams change the way they play, but uh, we feel we've got a little bit of the, the no. Uh, uh, Jacka Smith as well was mm. there for a, a fair period of time, so we're looking forward to the challenge. They're uh, top of the table and they're there for a reason. After being white hot for the first eight or nine weeks, Koch, your own form just slid a little, and, and we all cons were concerned that you weren't right. <coughs> Did you have some issues? <laughs> Beside <Yeah. Sorry>. the <laughs> man here is not long for this earth. Were you physically OK and are you OK now? Yeah, I was OK. Uh, it was probably one of those things where I had a small knee injury uh, so it was probably small. five or six uh, weeks into the season. Whether that takes your toll, I didn't feel that it was. Um, the greatest thing for us as a group uh, and, and our club at the moment is that a lot of our younger guys have really taken some steps forward this season and, and that takes the pressure off uh, our leadership group and we've seen at, at stages this year, uh, I mean, I think even last week against the Swans, uh, a couple of our, our players that normally uh, get a, a fair bit of the footy hadn't had much of the ball and we were still riding the game. So it's a fantastic sign for us but it's our challenge to do it more consistently. One of those young players that uh, we love watching is Dustin Martin who's had um, some ups and downs, had to just find his way in the AFL world. Now, you've had a fair bit to do with him. He, he parked himself at your house for, uh, I'm not sure, a couple of weeks or months, was it? Yes, three or four weeks it was, yeah. And uh, he, he's playing some terrific footy now. He's, I'm not sure whether you're giving him advice on the tattoo front, but we noticed this on the week uh, on the weekend. That's a Ooh. that's the latest addition to the old hand. Yes, uh, it, it's an interesting one. Yeah, it is. A little bit more paint on the um, arm. I don't reckon it'll be the last tattoo that he gets. It's... It's his thing, it's, it, it means a lot to him and um, more so his, his neck tattoos and so forth is all to do with his, his family and so forth. So. What about you Trent, you got any tats? No tats, Crawford, no. Nah, nah. It don't interest me too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, that, uh, we also, with a bit of uh, digging, found out that you're of course a, a massive fan of the Tigers as a kid. Is it true that you had on your wall a poster of Brett Delidio? Yes, that is true, and he still still brings it up. Uh, any any function. He's only two function. years older than you are. <laughs> I, I know it was it was probably a, a late maybe a crush I had on the way he plays the game. Oh, oh. Oh, no, yeah, he's yeah. just Kai Abram Fly, don't worry yeah, about exactly that. Exactly right. Now, Trent. I haven't kept right across the season, but have you actually beaten anyone above you <laughs> this year? <laughs> we really beat Fremantle uh, two weeks ago. Well done, I'm glad you said that. But they didn't have Ballantyne. <laughs> <laughs> or Sandilands. Or Who was Pavlich. the other one you told Pavlich. Pavlich. Who? Pavlich, McFarlane. McFarlane and or Pavlich in the side then, did they? <laughs> no, they didn't. So, no, this is the point. I know you're going great, Trent, and it's going to be fantastic when you make the finals. This will throw your September holidays into disarray. You won't know. <laughs> You'll have to put a... Uh, You've got to start to beat someone a bit uh, above you shortly, or else she'll be a short entry into the finals. <laughs> I don't know how serious I can take you into the game. Well, well, I appreciate it though, Sam. <laughs> no, you're right, we've been criticised for not being able to take it up to those, those bigger sides. Don't look at me, look at him. I'm oh, trying not sick. to breathe over him, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Go let's swap. Go don't on. make him sick. Not Go before on, a big up. game. No, you sit over there. That's yeah. not fair. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Sorry, Trent. You're going to make us I've still got questions to ask you, though. You don't want to play so. I'll sit down here. Go on, get on with it. Oh, I, am getting like I, I just want to go back to, to Dustin Martin, if I can. Uh, just yeah. with that three-week period that, that he was with you, <laughs> it's just 
while he's sorting himself out, I mean, you're confident now. I mean, he has had no hiccups. He's going. He's playing some really good footy. So it was just a, a matter of him finding his right sort of path in terms of uh, committing to the pressures and, and demands of AFL footy. Yeah, it was the right balance. And uh, Dusty knew himself that he had a little bit of growing up to do. Um, and, he, and he's put so many things in place now that, that keep him in check. And he's been fantastic. He's got a program. He sits down with Chalk every week. He ticks off... Um, Mark as, Williams. Yes, Mark yeah. Williams. As simple as uh, on his day off, it might be four different things that he needs to tick off. It might be paying his phone bill and so forth. But he's learnt <laughs> that, that having structure in his life is, uh, is a real good guidance to, to living the right one. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what, Koch. I hope you get in the finals, and I hope it's a home final first week. It will be unbelievable. You're taking on the Hawks. Let's take a look at this. Hawthorne Richmond, MCG Saturday, 2-10. Hawthorne, of course, just the two down for the year. They are in white-hot form. Sean Burgoyne's an unbelievable footballer. Buddy Franklin coming off eight. We saw Cyril and we saw Ruff, and they are really starting to roll beautifully. They take on, of course, the Tigers. going down to the Swans in Sydney. They are a very, very good side, Martin. You can see with the numbers there, McGuan, Stephenson and Asprey come in. We're going to get Koch's thoughts on this in a moment. But, uh, Force, why don't we start with you right yeah. down the end there? How do you on think this is going to go? On behalf of Shane, uh, this is the certainty. <laughs> <laughs> For Hawthorne, what? No. Your tipping Hawthorne's certainty is to beat Richmond. Yep. Oh, no. You've got no choice, Shane. He's, yeah. he's done it for you. What, so you don't think Hawthorne will beat Richmond? Yes. There's certainties. No. Uh, not, not because Richmond aren't good, but Hawthorne... They lost by 62 points the last time they met. <laughs> Doesn't matter, Shane. You, Richmond's you, flogged us. So, no, no, can you not do that? <laughs> I've got another game coming. Dale, who do you like? Uh, I like the Hawks. I thought some of their ball movement last weekend against Essendon was as good as I've seen for a very, very long time. And Richmond had a great year, and I do hope you make the finals. Yep. But I think the uh, Hawks will get you this weekend. Sorry, mate. Ball? Uh, oh, yeah, I think the Hawks... Just, although, yeah, that, that last uh, last meeting um, sticks in your mind a bit. And I think the, the Tigers will certainly attack them through the midfield. I think, and Koch, you got a good look at Sydney first hand last week, and we did five or six weeks ago. Probably the best midfield, deepest midfield going around at the moment. I think that'll hold you in pretty good stead this week. And um, I certainly wouldn't be calling it a certainly. I think it, uh, it could go either oh, way. Well, I, 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 I think I'll pick, <laughs> trend, I'll pick the Hawks. But, I, <laughs> but, um, I think you probably won't win, but that wouldn't be a certainty. <laughs> Shut up. Hey, Gary, it's we need to recognise Brent Guerra, who's playing game number 250, by the way. And he has been an unbelievably good player for a long time. The goo. So, well done. Greg Delidio, uh, you've talked about it and he's your hero. Um, he's had a couple of issues with taggers. Um, do you talk to him about it? Probably the reality is the team, opposition teams will only go to one player and ultimately it would be you or he. Now he's the one that seems to struggle most with it at the moment, so you're the beneficiary, I guess, in the long run, but um, what, what's your advice to him? Oh, we actually spoke, uh, we speak in depth about it every week, but more so last week, just... The key to, to beating a tag is winning your own contested footy and, and he knows that's an area that he's improved in but still can take it to another level. Um, I think the, the best thing about Lids is that he's, he's worked out that if he can contribute still in the same way that he does without having 30 possessions, uh, then that's the best thing for the team. And um, With a selfless attitude, that's exactly what we encourage in all our players, but especially you feel like you're out there on your own sometimes when you're being tagged and especially against the good ones. Um, Ryan Crowley, obviously, is one that stands out. But uh... Well, you're no stranger to taggers either, though, because we've got a photo here of you playing for Victoria in the <laughs> primary school team, and that man with you, whose arm around you have is Cyril Rioli. And uh, we're reading here with great interest that you were sent to tag him in this particular game. <laughs> I was. I think he was a seasoned veteran by then. He'd had his about fourth or fifth year in the under-12s. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a little bit of talent to pick from up there, but uh, we know how much of a star he is, and... Thank God I won't have the job on him uh, on the weekend. So uh, it'll be interesting to see who goes to him and uh, that will be a serious battle. Absolutely. Shane? Shane. Uh, call me Sam. Sam? Uh, ooh, uh, oh, who's playing? Uh, oh, oh, what's it do? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, who's playing, Gary? Oh, I think the Hawks. <laughs> you think oh, I think the Hawks. Hey, uh, the other question, of course, that's burning uh, through uh, everyone's ooh. television sets, Koch, is uh, Jake the Push-Up King. Uh, we only one more week out of the little champ, the spiritual leader down there. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. We know how important he is to the, to the way we line up. Uh, 
you'd hate to tell him that we all breathe a little bit stronger with him in the side, but um, he is. He's a fantastic contributor to our structure and our side, and we love having him out there. Getting married soon too, yes. Gary. Hey, uh, yeah. Getting married to Rick Kennedy, former Bulldogs champion, fullback champion daughter. Yes. Yes, I got that out. Yes, you got that. <laughs> Eventually um, so imagine... Great. Yeah, Imagine the what the kids thing. are going to do when they're up and about. Rick uh, Kennedy. Yes. Oh, who did I say? Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, you okay. punched me fair in the head one day. <laughs> yeah, and you bloody from... deserved it too. <laughs> so, uh... When's that happening, Trent? Uh, December this year. And local, or are you one of these yeah. overseas sort Down of Down your way, Jim. Flinders. So. Oh, oh, beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, he's uh, a great man, Rick Kennedy, but I wouldn't want to do the wrong thing there, Trent. Hey, listen. What we do need to do is acknowledge the Hawthorne coach. Now, um, over the years, we've had a segment called the Gary Coleman Medal. We have. Uh, when perhaps we just lose our stuff. Award a bit. winning. Award winning, it was. And then sadly, Gary passed away. So oh, we have to bring that haven't up. had the, um, the award for a while, but we're going to rename it. And it is now called The Angry Owl. <laughs> It's about uh, players who lost their stuff, Shane. You've got the first one. We have. We've got a uh, Boston Red Sox uh, baseball. Have a look at him here. He just loses it. He's got his bat. He says, I am not happy, so I'm going to take it out on someone. Oh, oh, no. Take that. Take yeah. that. Not happy. I wasn't out, umpire. Bang, bang, That's bang. It. All right, so that he's is a our candidate. very first hey, nomination. Well done, he's young man. He's a candidate man. for the first Angry Elgin. He is definitely a candidate. I'm not sure how angry he was, but we loved Warney's work at Royal Ascot. Let's take a look at some of uh, Shane rolling over there. Just living the dream, the great man. The blowfish, and uh, of course, he's beautiful fiance, so we love the way Shane was operating. And, got uh, the diary there as well. I've got one for you, Jim. Yeah. We had, uh, one that would make you angry out of the Linton on the weekend, Dan, it's too long. Uh, James Podsy adds the actually kicked the ball into the umpire's head. Bang. Gets it back. Here it is again. Oh. So that would uh, make you angry even though everyone else enjoys it. So the pilot is also a nomination. Now, the reason it's called the Angry Owl is that Al Clarkson got into a little uh, bit of trouble on the weekend. He went to a VFL game in which the Hawthorne VFL side was playing against Port Melbourne and uh, exchanged words. Now, we didn't have vision of it, Jim, but we reckon it was something oh, along these no, lines. And um, Samuel, oh. yeah. the Angry Owl uh, will be presented tonight for the first time and I left it up to you to, um, oh. to make those arrangements. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm going to present it to the man himself. Yeah, I've got Alistair well, Clark. I've got nothing to do with this. No, this is, excuse me, Trent. Yeah, yeah, this is, oh. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Clarko. Clarko. <laughs> Must be delighted that Shane said that Buddy's going to uh, sign with you again. Al, Al, Alistair? <laughs> yes, <laughs> very happy, right. very happy. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, bugger off, Al. <laughs> We'll be watching that. Marco will be watching oh, it. Yeah, uh, I reckon, he'd reckon that's really funny. That too. was simple. Oh, Sam, who oh, said, let's man. get uh, Arthur back. I said, oh, I've just like... got a text message, Sam, from Clarko. <laughs> I am going to smash Sam's <laughs> face in. <laughs> hey, Cod, it's going to be a massive game on the weekend. Richmond versus Hawthorne. Hopefully, for the Tigers' sake, you can get through and shore up that space in the finals, and we appreciate you coming in. Trent Cod, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have the show after that. Tonight, the boss puts on a happy face despite doing street talk from Greensboro. Yeah, how about just a group cuddle, you know? Maybe we can be the group. <laughs> and a cracking footy legends, plus some bomber legends in the audience. But bad luck if you just tuned in because you missed Gary's daring certainty stunt from earlier. That's impressive, Gaz man. Stay with us. Welcome back to the footy show. Thanks to Nish Navarra, a home timber and hardware sportsbet.com.au. Magnificent sponsors of ours. Time now for Sam's Mailbag. 
sort of, sort of muffled applause then. Yeah. Uh, uh, Brian of... Uh, or was it Brian? Brian of Melbourne. Dear Mr Newman, I met you at Greensboro on Tuesday and just wanted to say what a warm, generous soul you are. You are a modern-day scholar, erudite, a man who breathes honesty and walks upright and true. Hey, now, we, th we thought uh, an articulate man... And he said, and he sent this in. I know this is gratuitous smut, Gary, but, he's, <laughs> but he really? sent this in. I don't know why he said he just thought you might be interested in that. What is it? Uh, it's, it's called cock flavouring season. <laughs> <laughs> cock flavoured seasoning. Cock flavoured seasoning. <laughs> That's it. We're not sure why would Brian said that in, uh, but yes. we. Uh, but they apparently, uh, um, apparently, Dell had uh, some brought out. Um, brought out. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> come on, Dell. <laughs> I didn't. There you have. Oh, yeah, come on. I, I didn't. I, Adele, I didn't understand why funny. we did that, but apparently well, you had a yeah. photograph of your wizard. Oh, right, a... <laughs> right. Come on, what else you got? What's it taste like? Apparently, what, what does it taste like? That's a very good chicken. question. Cock chicken, flavored. I chicken, I reckon. Tell you, it yeah. tastes like chicken. That's yeah. right. Uh, ducky, uh, not ducky, Brucey of Sale. Dear Sam, I heard last week on the show. Yeah, no, this is true. I heard yeah. last week on the show there was going to be a story on the history of the footy card. What happened? Didn't you visit their factory outlet last Tuesday? Well, I did. We did. Uh, we were doing street talk and we met a charming man called Dana... Uh, Dana. <laughs> David, who is the owner, and uh, he said we could give away these boxes of uh, cards. Uh, he gave us a whole carton and... Uh, we... is, that, is that all he said? Uh, pardon? Is that all he said? It's my understanding that you went out there oh, God, here we and go. then, this is true, and then you filthied up after going through their vaults when you couldn't find a car to yourself. <laughs> and then, apparently, you went home and returned with one from your own private collection. <laughs> There's you dirtying up because you couldn't find your card, and then you got in your car, you drove home, dirty up. you dirtied up yep. and brought one back from your own collection. And is then, that right? is that true? Extinct. And then, before you answer that, you got even filthier when you found two teammates from 1973 from the Geelong Football Club who you'd never even heard of. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? That is true. <laughs> now, this is the cards. You, know, this, you were the vice captain. In 1973, I was in the stellar career form, <laughs> and not only didn't I get a card, yes. I had these two blokes I'd never yeah. heard of. <laughs> uh, please, if you're listening... Uh, <laughs> This is, uh, this is one hundred percent serious. He went down. He didn't have a card, and absolutely cracked the shits. He did, and went back, got one, and then those two blokes turned up and uh, didn't know who they were. Um, if, if you're watching, you uh, if up. you're still alive, Gordon, oh. Gordon Linquist, and you Rod the voice Captain? Stoker, I. I have you not never know? heard of them. <laughs> and um, and I'm sorry if you're watching, boys. Uh, you Rod probably know. Stokes. Stokesy. Rod Stokes and Gordon Linquist. Uh, old Linker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, not Linker. only I haven't heard him, I got bloody cards. <laughs> Where are my cards? He well, said, you, you weren't in that year. Uh, how can you? Well, well, you I... wasted an hour of that bloke's time. No, it's longer than that. No, it through. took him a couple of hours. Okay, so you're the vice captain and you didn't get a card. That happens sometimes. But how could you not know? Your own teammates. Yeah. Well, I have Jeez. never heard of those two boys. <laughs> and uh, That's um, extraordinary. Well, that is extraordinary. I said that myself. Yeah. I said that is extraordinary. And apparently, I've <laughs> played with them for 18 games and never heard of them. Apparently, you saw a couple of your other mates on the cards too while you were down there, old teammates. Like Thingy and that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not a clue, possibly me down the bottom. <laughs> Give me a moment. <laughs> Bluey Hampshire, uh, Huey Strawn, <laughs> Dennis Marshall. Hey, I couldn't let's see. not make an old Linko feel any better. It's now, Linko. <laughs> Stoker. And Stokesy. Quisty. <laughs> if, if you're watching, mate, I'm sorry. I Christy. have I met you or not? <laughs> oh, that's, Come a, on. that's arrogant for us. That is. That's the height of arrogance. It's not as bad as what I yes. what, couldn't you introduce. <laughs> what, what, what happened? I was the captain of Geelong. <laughs> we, that was when the umpires would come round. Yes. <laughs> and you had to introduce the players to the umpire. Yes. I was the captain. Yes. And I said, this is Bill Goggin and Doug Wade. And, this is... and we got to a bloke and I said... 
He did not. He did not. But you know that's real because we had him on the free yeah, show. What did you say? What did you say? I said, this is Jeff Crouch, who was the umpire. I said, yeah. this is. I said, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> he said. <laughs> He said, he said in a fairly terse voice, it's Gerald Fitzgerald, Sam. I said, thank you, Gerald. Uh, uh, that was the last I ever spoke to a story Gerald of Gerald Fitzgerald. Gerald Fitzgerald. Oh, no. oh, we've had him on. He's a terrific bloke and he's I apologise. He's a uh, great coach. In coach fact. I know, he's a very charming man. Paul, have you ever played with anyone whose name you didn't know at AFL level? No, I'm good with names. Del, Del doesn't know. He's knows. dreadful. <laughs> when you were saying, you didn't know any of the young kids in here. <laughs> <laughs> Complete lie. Right, oh, no, you got no, another letter there. Right, oh, thank you, Gary. <laughs> uh, Bono, Bono of Colac. Yes. Hey, old man. <laughs> Just wondering if you ever. Oh, I'm going to cough again. Oh, no. Just oh, wondering geez. if you ever heard of Big Brother or do you only watch Gardening Australia? <laughs> oh, <laughs> good on you, Bono. <laughs> uh, uh, for, for your information, Bono, I did this uh, Big Brother sketch years ago. This, this was uh, Gary and I. Hey, Sam. 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 <laughs> Come over here. Huh? Why? What are you going to do to me? <laughs> Come on, oh, no. You're not going to fart at me, are you? Oh, yes. oh. Shut your eyes. Whoa, what are you, do you going to do? <laughs> You're not going to turkey slap me, are you? No. <laughs> you liars, you are going to turkey slap me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 that's a turkey slap. That's how it goes. <laughs> I can't oh, remember doing that. I, I, no wonder I can't remember Rod Linquist's Link name. I can't remember doing no, that. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, now hang on. <laughs> Jesus. Well, there is a new reality oh. show I'd like you to see you on, says. Um, oh, Jesus. <laughs> says Bono. It's called Naked and Afraid. Two strangers. There's my partner. One man and one woman, both experienced survivalists, have chosen to put their skills to the ultimate test. They have no water, no food, and no clothes. Their challenge is to survive for 21 days. God, you're so screwed. Naked and afraid. How much more do I have to give to this place? <sighs> this is a new show, Gary. It's yeah. like that moron Bear Grylls or whatever you... Yeah, yeah, you yeah, love him. I love him. Man out eating... A bit like Adam and Living Eve. in a camel Very tent. A bit like Adam and Eve out there. Very Adam and Eve ish, boy. Eating in a camel Survive. tent, or he yeah. hollows out, takes the guts out of a does. camel and uses he it does. as a tent while the, uh, the, the <laughs> Winnebago <laughs> and all the crew are sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, naked and afraid. <laughs> 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 uh, anyhow, they have a warning. Uh, they have a warning on the show. Uh, it, it, it's a buttocks warning. Is that right? In is case that... it, 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 it's true. If you're easily offended by the sight of naked buttocks, please avert your eyes. That's the warning on the show. Right. Yes. And we could use the same warning, Gary, because we've had uh, plenty of buttocks on, on your yeah, show. Yeah, Gary, of course. Yeah, this oh, this yeah, is okay. what we've done. Yeah. Oh, no. 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 If you want to be a part of this Thanks. unbelievably good segment, Sam at Okay, Adelaide, take on Port Adelaide. It's the uh, showdown. I think. Oh, it's it's it is. Sunday, 3:20 in Amy Stadium. The Adelaide Crows can't make the eight, but they'd love to make life difficult for the Port Adelaide Footy Club. Uh, got some big ins. Paddy Dangerfield's back. Ben Rutten's back into the side. They lose Rory Sloan with a, uh, an eye injury. Henderson in very, very good form for the Crows. Port Adelaide, they are going beautifully, eh? Come on, Adelaide. Brisbane by nine points. Uh, got three inclusions there, but they'll finalise the team. Schultz playing great footy. Wingard is a star of the competition. Uh, Adelaide will love nothing more than to turf Port, Ad uh, Port Adelaide out of the eight ball. Can they do it? I think they can, yeah. I think they'd love to upset the apple cart there, and they, I think they might just do that. Del? Yeah, I think uh, no Sloan, no, uh, no Adelaide. Adelaide to win for me, Gary. Uh, I think they'll win, Sam. Dangerfield, he's come back. Yeah, he's a bit sore. It'll take 15 minutes to warm up. <laughs> Boss? 
Um, what a great thing Adelaide did last year, and how good have Port Adelaide been just to lift and get there? Yeah, Toshi. Uh, and Toshi. Uh, oh, I don't know who would win. Port Adelaide, I'm going for. All right, okay. we're going to take a break. Fossil goes to Greensboro next for a street talk. Stick around on the footy. Show. Greensboro, home of the best two laughers we've had on Street Talk. <laughs> Do you? After a dismal weekend in footy, it's just what we needed. Right, Andy? Yes. Well done, you Sam. We're in Greensy. We are in Greensy. Greensboro. Oh, Green Greensy, yep. You're in Greensboro. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Why did you come here? Well, i tell you why we came here. This is the worst place in the world. No, Eric. This, <laughs> this oh, yeah. man is going around grumpy at the minute because Essendon are giving him grief. Ah. What can we do to... Bro what Brighton George? Hey, you wrinkly <laughs> I do watch you, but don't swear. You wrinkly f***er. Well, that's nice, isn't it? What makes you laugh, sir? What makes you... Gives when you... Connie will win to play. That'd make you laugh? That'd yeah. make you feel chuffed? Would it? No, no, I'm asking it. It would no, make it. I'm just saying. No, you ask me a question. Let me answer it, sir. Okay, sir. Yep. I don't know. I hate Essendon. I go for North. Okay. Well, well, uh, they won. Uh, they beat. Um, About time we bloody won. Yeah, and they're playing the Cats this weekend. So, what do you think? Yeah, I'm they're going to eat us. They're going to eat us. They're going to spit us out, and then they're going to burn us and piss on our ashes. <laughs> And so that you're chipping Geelong, are you? Yeah. yeah. What makes you smile? Just jokes oh, thinking or... About, think, think about what? Thinking about you when you play with Geelong. Oh. And you had the best bun and the best <laughs> buns. Best, best buns? Bum. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Well done. I've tried to tell Bill H Brown... It's spelled A-I-T-C-H. Correct. <laughs> Uh, yeah? Ah, oh, yes, 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 still good. I'd like to say hello to anyone. Hi. No, no, not there. Here, down here. Drugs is a beer. But it can be. It's like cigarettes and things like yes, that. Yes, jaundice, mate. What's that? Jaundice, mate. Have I got jaundice? No, I said jaundice, mate. What are you, sick of beer when oh, you're not one day? I thought you said if I got... Well, hello. Well, well, laughing is great tonic, you know that. Can <laughs> you laugh? <laughs> can you laugh like that just at call? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, where would we go fancy? Where would you like to go? I'll pick up in the Lambo. Oh, uh, maybe go and see the strippers. <laughs> We're trying to get this man to look like this. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an instructional video out for newlyweds. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, do you know James Brayshaw? Yes. yes. He's uh, doing some of his best work over a, uh, <laughs> a hot bench. It's called Ramming the Point Home. <laughs> Swimsuit? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Got any jokes or anything? No, 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 no. Uh, I'm the worst joke teller in the yeah. world, yes. Went, went to a seafood disco and I pulled a muscle. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Pizza. Pizza who? Pizza, good bloke, when you get to know him. <laughs> Sessions a week. Ten so sessions a week of 45 hands minutes. Hands will be permanently wrinkled. Yeah, you look like I, a prune. Yeah, but I put heaps of shea butter on. What's that called? Shea butter. <laughs> what, what, you lather yourself up in I butter? I certainly Good do. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so, then you, can you do that? You're oh, a right, <laughs> the great people of Greensboro and uh, very nicely done for us. We need to keep busting on the footy show. GWS take on Melbourne. This game has great interest. 
18th place, 17th here, the Giants. Uh, what about uh, our man last week? was quite extraordinary. Jeremy Cameron kicked 7-1, lit the MCG up. Ward is having a very good season. Cornelia and Whitfield, two very impressive young players coming in. The Demons need to bounce back after a 100-point loss. For all, if you've got some big outs, Dawes is out as well. And also, Bleas comes out the Bleaser. And you can see the players the that have come in. Uh, Shane, what do you think? Uh, I'm thinking, oh, I'll tell you what, a tough weekend of footy tipping. But I'm going to go with GWS with the big outs for oh. Melbourne. So GWS first win of the season. First to have win. a win for Kevin Shea. Well, yep. yeah, Farewell. Last... Last time they met, uh, Melbourne overran him in the last quarter and up winning by 40 points. I think it'll be the reverse this time at uh, Skoda Stadium. Bolly? Yeah, they would have set themselves for this, I reckon, probably a month out. And I think they will get their first win. Awesome. I want to ask you a question, Gary. Yes. Uh, Jack Watts, yes. he said he's not making a decision until he knows who the coach is. What is that? Is he waiting to see if the integrity of the club can come up with someone that he is happy with that will coach him? He might never have a choice in it. What, what do you mean? He might never have a choice in it. Isn't he contracted for another year anyway? No, he's out. No, ever. what do you mean he might never have a choice? They might let him go. Oh. Well, 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 well. Hello. Gee, hello. <laughs> well, beside all that, you know, do you think that, that do you think that is reasonable for a player to yeah. say, "Oh, well, I want to know the coaches"? Aren't you a servant of the club? I would have they... thought. I would have thought. If you're happy with the club, then you stay. If you don't, you that's go. right. And you, you trust oh, well, that they're going, going to get the best coach they that's can, right. not up right. to the player. Ah, yeah. oh, Shane, he knows who's staying and who's going. Uncle. What's your, yeah. what's your hunch? Oh, my hunch is he'll work out who the coach is and he'll make a decision from there. Who's going to win the game for? CWS or no, the Melbourne will win the game. Gary? Samuel? Almost certain he's the Demons. Oh. Almost, oh. I said. Go on, go Almost. On. Go on, Gary. Gary. Go on, Gary. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hey. That's it. Ah. <laughs> Certainly. Jeepers. <laughs> That's no, what we want to see. Confident. I was a bit concerned when James Frawley's out. And Dawes. Uh, and Blum on, on Jeremy Cameron and fix him up. Oh, no. So gonna, go with oh, the Jeremy Cameron. They're going to have to. We're going to get into another match. Uh, the Western Bulldogs taking on the mighty Swans. <laughs> Sunday, Etihad Stadium. And I'll tell you what, the Bulldogs were very, very good last week against uh, the West Coast Eagles. Libertore, the tackling machine. He's having a wonderful season. Dalhouse. Uh, had a wonderful game. Murphy's going well. Uh, and they're having a real crack, the Bulldogs. have been very good over the last few weeks. And the Mighty Swans, how good are they uh, when Richmond really challenged them? They went to a new level. Tip it. Pike. Half Pike. Hasn't he been magnificent all year? And young Biggs comes in for his very first game. So well done to him, uh, the young boy from Bendigo Bombers. So good luck. And the Swans are just on fire. They'll continue to win. Yeah, totally agree, so, uh, Shane. I think uh, Sydney's midfield are the best in the league and they will continue that trend. They'll win this game on the weekend. Dogs are going well, though. Yeah, they no, were terrific last week, but I think the Swans are almost the benchmark at the moment, probably with the Hawks, obviously, but they'll uh, continue on their winning ways. Tammy? And the Cats would be up there if you're talking about yeah. benches, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I think they're, they're a benchmark. I think no, I agree. Swans. swans, but the dogs are going to okay. go. Swans good. They don't go away. We've got almost footy legends. We're going to preview Collingwood and Essendon. Paul Vanderhaal and Simon Madden are going to join us. Welcome back to the free show and welcome to our James Bogues Draft Team of the Week. We have the Manningham Football Club and the Seaford Football Club in the audience. And as always, James Bogues draft giving a thousand dollars to our local footy club for our panelists, but they've already got their money. We're going to get straight into it and have a look at this. Here it is, almost footy legends, and it's Wangaratta up against Wodonga. We're looking for a high mark over the top. Launches at it. Oh, that is Luke Bull style Certainly over the top. You happy with that? Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Not bad. I reckon this one's better though. I've got Pegasus versus Trinity Gammon here. Hands, the big grand know. final. It's a Daniel oh, Wells. Style ninja kicking here, and that was actually to win the game and win the premiership. Ken Fletcher's last game Ken for the Pigs. Ken Fletcher, so what a start he's been. A Have a look at this moment. for a mark, Lukey. What do you reckon? Oh, oh. up over the top, Jezalika. You lands on his feet like a cat and takes off. And the handball off there. Which one did oh, you like? You? Did you like uh, one, two, three? Did you I like the two. I like the moment. Okay. Yeah, big well, moment. let's see, audience. Did you like the first mark? Two, Donovan Kenny Fletcher, you have won this. 
congratulations. Thanks to James Bowe's draft, our weekly winner takes home $1,000 cash, while our runners-up receive $500 each. Sponsoring over 150 local clubs, James Bogue's Draft is a proud supporter of grassroots footy. At the end of the year, our runner-up pockets $20,000 cash thanks to Deep Heat, providing fast, temporary relief from muscle aches and strains. Deep Heat. Is the stuff of legends. Thanks to our great friends at Home Timber and Hardware, our major prize winner takes home a mega toolbox full of $40,000 cash. That's going to come in handy for that renovation you always wanted. So if you want to do it right, go where the tradies go, Home Timber and Hardware. Send your entries to Almost Footy Legends, GPO Box 9, Melbourne 3001. And don't forget, you can now upload your legends directly to the website, Gary at footyshow.com. The best prize is in footy, so get your video along to your local game. Before we have a look at Collingwood taking on Essendon in what is going to be a massive game, we are blessed. And... <laughs> and that list thing, I said before we have a look at that game, yes. we are blessed and privileged to have two of the greatest Essendon players of all time. Join all us in time. the audience. Paul Van Der Haar and Simon Madney. Yeah. <laughs> Simon and Grant. Gary, Gary, just uh, Sam, I played against you. Remember me, do you? Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, you were the best. Oh, thank you. That's all I needed you to say. You don't happen to know uh, old Linquist and Stokes by any chance, do you, Simon? <laughs> hey, you're on the very first Sunday footy show. So we've got you. Thanks uh, for all of this. The first Sunday footy show, a long time ago, three or four years ago. Um, <laughs> we're on that one. I had a great time, and this man. Uh, and the great E.J. Whitten, I used to sit between the two of them. That's it. And they used to come up with some unbelievable schemes. It was amazing. Did you think he'd still be going 25 years later? I thought he'd be dead. <laughs> 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 we, we've also wondered that tonight, in actual fact, whether he'd get through. Hey, Van, they're great to have you here. What about what are you making of all the drama down at Essendon at the moment, mate? Uh, I haven't really kept up much detail with that. I uh, don't sit around watching too much telly, but um, I don't know. I, was, I think I'm a bit confused like everybody else. Peptides in your day or just a stubby after the game? Nah, just a beer and a smoke in our day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you had a very, very... Or well, you still are, I think, in the pool business, are you not? Yeah, still doing that, yeah. And you've you've, you've uh, made some pools for some very famous people. Now, I want to refresh your memory. You probably... I'm not sure whether you even remember this, but this was uh, out at Waverley, Dermot Brereton in action, and bang! Oh. No, I don't remember it. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you're thrilled we play it, but you've been good enough. You actually made Dermot a pool at one stage, didn't you? I've done a renovation on Zoom's pool, yeah. yeah. Charge, him, charge him three times the price. <laughs> Made sure it leaked for eight <laughs> years. <laughs> hey, Simon, you're, you know, I understand where Van is coming from because uh, he doesn't follow the footy as closely, but you certainly do, mate. Um, what have you made of it all? Oh, look, I'm, I'm actually tired of it. Yep. I'm, I'm just ready for this. Everybody's got an opinion. I reckon you could go through here and there'd be 400 opinions. Everybody's got an opinion. I just want the report to come out so we can get some truths, some honesty and just move on, because I'm sick of it. Yeah. yeah. Well said. I think we're on the same boat. Now, boys, we'll get your thoughts on this game, Collingwood and Eston, shortly, but you are here for a very good reason. One of your great mates uh, very tragically passed away. Merv Nagel, well-known to everyone in the footy world, was an outstanding player with Essendon, and then later at the Sydney Swans, tragically passed away last year uh, in August. Uh, a car accident, he leaves behind six kids, and you've got a big fundraising function coming up. Yeah, look, it, it's, uh, you might be surprised, but some ex-footballers don't get their don't get their affairs in order while they're alive, of course, and so uh, Merv's left uh, a big family, and we're keen to um, make sure that that family gets looked after, and because we played in the Premiership together, we're real keen to just keep that contact and make sure that the people involved in Essendon and their families are looked after. So on August 22, uh, at the Grand Height, there's a big uh, fundraiser. It's not just only Essendon people, there's the Swans people too, because he's involved in that. And I think even I think we're going to get uh, Dipper to come along and, and Dougie Hawkins, people who played against him. It's a real, it's going to be a real good, uh, um, just a really good fun night and you know good fun from the old times as well. A few stories, a bit of fun. And uh, we reckon it'll be a great night and we, uh, hopefully everybody in the footy world will come along and uh, 
make it even better night. Absolutely, EssendonFC.com.au. There's a phone number, and I, I'd imagine when these blokes get together, it'll be uh, a ripping night. So, Merv Nagel, as I said, much loved and a superstar of the game. Almost won a Brownlow medal at one stage and a Premiership teammate. So, get along, EssendonFC.com.au. Stay with us, boys. We're going to have a look at this game, Jimmy. It is a very oh, yes. big one. A couple of uh, Essendon royalties in the Merv Wilson. They take on Collingwood. Massive game, Triple MCG on Sunday. The Maggies need to be winning. Now, Luke Ball's back in. Nice to see, of course. Uh, Lynch and the Seed. And Swan in very good form there as well and has been pretty much all year. Has his Pendlebury. The Bombers got a bounce back after being touched up by the Hawks. Some changes there. Look at the ins. Watson comes back in. Huge in. Fletcher is too. Gumbledon, Hardingham and O'Brien. Heppel was fantastic in that losing side against the Hawks on the weekend. Shane? Uh, another tough game. I think uh, the Essendon players are right behind their coach and I think they'll show that in this match and the Bombers to have a win in a very close one. Dal? Yeah, once again, Shane, I think you're spot on there. I think it's been another tough week for the Bombers, but all year they've stood up when that's uh, been counted. That's been on the weekend, so I think they'll do it one more time. Boy. Uh, I think the pies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, yeah. Quentin Lynch has uh, his first few weeks were okay and then struggled a bit. Maybe he was carrying an injury. Yeah, he was. Well. Yeah, he was a bit sore, so he had a couple of weeks off. And he's a workhorse Q and plenty of plenty of miles on the clock. So a couple of weeks off, then he was best on ground for our VFL team last week. So if he uh, if he comes into the team, he'll be uh, fresh and ready to go. And the reality is, you haven't shored up that position in the finals yet. I heard Nick Max will talk about it today. Yeah, we'll expect that you'll get there, but the run home is pretty tough. It is tough. Yeah, we've got the three of the top five teams in the next three weeks. So uh, as I said earlier, we'll either rise to the occasion and earn our spot in the finals, or we'll be found wanting. Of course. Very tough game, Gary. I, I think, as uh, young Shane uh, well, and uh, Nick said, that uh, Essendon uh, just have got something to play for. Not that Collingwood haven't, but uh, I think there's something welling up behind Essendon before you reckon they're going to lose all their points and it's completely... What's used. your thoughts on all that, Sam? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> hey, um, I just want to ask the great Paul Vanderhaar, because you are one of the great characters that's ever played the game, Vander. In modern footy, if you were 18 today... How would you have gone with 85 meetings a week and uh, training every day and special <laughs> skill sessions? How do you reckon you would have coped with all of that? Yeah, I don't think it would have been my great attribute there. It was bad enough with all the meetings we had to do then. That was only three. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think it would have suited my style of game. But, um, look, I enjoyed the era we played in and it was fantastic. Um, it's, it's something I don't really dwell on that much. But uh, footy was a great thing for me and uh, a great relationship with uh, friends and that and uh, as the main reason coming in tonight is mainly for Merv to try and do a promotion for him because we played footy, I played footy with him for nine years at Essendon and uh, then he went to Sydney for five but I still kept in contact with him then and then there's still 22 years after that that we yep. had a great, close relationship with the family and the uh, kids and so forth so that's the main reason for coming in and um, I reckon it's fantastic for what Essendon is doing as a club and as Sydney also contributing to all this that um, it's, a, it's a great thing. But with footy, that's what you get out of it. And um, I've enjoyed it. And uh, Good life man. goes on. Um, I, I, could I say, uh, Tim Watson kindly asked me to be part of the uh, fundraiser or the day, the night. Yep. But of course, it's on Thursday, Gary, yes, so yes. I, that's the only reason I can't do it, unless you'd give me time off to go down there. Well, we, we, the, on your form tonight, we wouldn't mind getting in for a night. <laughs> uh, what we will do is we'll continue to promote it. It's a big tribute dinner for Merv Nagel. It's on the 22nd of August at the Grand Hall. Go to the smfc.com.au for all those details. Simon and, and Vanna, thanks for coming in, boys. Well, thanks for having me. We'll be all time breaks, not only at the Essendon Footy Club, but the AFL. We'll take a break and wrap up the footy show afterwards. Thanks for listening to our home team at hardwaresportspit.com.au. What are you looking at? What am I looking at? Blow your nose. He's oh, no. just in a terrible oh, state, the old fella. He's slowly unravelling. Hey, thanks for the panel. Lukey Ball, Linky Dell, good luck on the weekend, boys. Great to have you in. Also, Shane. Now, um, 
We just want to make a very special announcement tonight. Uh, one of our all-time favourites here from the publicity department, Emma Wells-Jones. Gorgeous there. She Look is. Look at him. Beautiful young lady. Yeah, there she is. Uh, she is leaving us, very sadly. She is heading over to London. She's got bigger fish to fry than us. So, from all of us, Em, we've loved working with you, darling. We're going to miss you. So, we are. Thank you, guys. Thank we you, are. Boys. And speaking of London... Well, actually, about four hours north in uh, Manchester, Australia are two for 92 at lunch after winning the toss and batting first. And that will be over on Gem once you finish watching the footy show. Rogers 67, Clark 5. Hey, we've appreciated your company. Hope you enjoyed the show. Good luck for your team on the weekend, and we'll see you next Thursday at 8.30.